Morning folks. The dark night of the soul. What the heck is that? Let's talk about it. First off, disclaimer. In this video, I'm gonna get spiritual. So if you're not into that, it's all nonsense and bullshit. You should go away. Now. Second, although I, I try to keep it all positive, because in fact it is, this is not going to be a fun video. Third, all I tell you, as usual, is backed up by my own experiences. So I don't tell you anything just because I read or heard about it. I went through it myself. <laughs> it's a little like pff, shopping, you know? When I go shopping, let's say for example, I buy a new coffee machine. I buy it in a shop and then I go home and read the reviews on Amazon later to confirm my good decision. Means when I experience something unusual in my life, I go through it and then I do my research to find out what the heck is going on here. Just want to say that it's not kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy, like reading about it and then going through it. No, not with me. Back to the topic. Now, Dark Knight of the Soul is a, as the name says, <laughs> a very dark, even sinister phase in your life that initiates your spiritual awakening. Now the problem is to understand that you're going through the dark night of the soul because if you would go to the doctors or therapists or whatever in this moment you get diagnosed probably with severe depression maybe suicidal tendencies you get some funny meds and that prevents you from going through it now although for every individual might be slightly different. It's not a thing that you can set out over a weekend. For some it takes months, for others it takes years. I'm now in my, now September, eighth month and I think I'm almost through it. Now people say the dark night of the soul, you can divide it in five phases. Where the first phase is the initial crisis. It is an event, let it be small, minuscule, big, doesn't matter, that is initiating this dark night of the soul. Second phase is called dissolution or breaking point of your ego. Your entire world falls apart. You're losing friends, you're losing relationships, you lose your job. Your entire self is dying and your life as you know it ceases to exist. Third phase, surrender. You understand that you, yourself, in this condition, you cannot change anything on your own. It has no impact 
no matter how hard you try, <laughs> nothing changes. And you give your entire life into somebody else's hand. Some might call it the universe, some might call it God. People in Cologne would say, it is what it is. It had no a Yogi young. Fourth phase, shadow work. You are forced to face and work through all of your past traumas. This is the most painful phase because it's the longest phase and you have to work through all of the shit that you refuse to work on for all those years. This is really bad. But in the end of that phase, you can finally start living in peace with your past, in peace with your unhealed wounds. You don't heal your wounds, it's not possible. But you're now able to deal with the pain. And in the end, fifth phase, reintegration or transformation. You are going through your spiritual awakening or you have gone through it. You're a complete different person. The person who started the dark night of the soul is dead, doesn't exist anymore. And all you feel is peace and unconditional love for everyone and everything. Some people call the name, uh, the, the phases differently, but in general it's always an initial crisis, deep depression, shadow work, and in the end, your spiritual awakening. That's nice. Now, to myself, I had a pretty shitty life. No compassion needed. <laughs> Same with a lot of people. I have a lot of traumas. Don't talk about it. And since I don't talk about it, it all, it all <laughs> piled up like in a pressure cooker. And when that initial crisis hit me, the event itself was so small, was ridiculous, but it made the, the pressure cooker explode in my face. By the way, people say, when you break up with your twin flame, dark night of a soul is inevitable. I think that's what happened to me. But twin flame journey, complete different topic for another video. <laughs> now, <laughs> when my initial crisis hit, now I have to laugh about it, it's not funny. I was lying on my sofa and it was like flipping the switch. And it felt like my inner demons left my body ripped my chest wide open, pulled all my guts out of my chest cavity. It's a little graphic, isn't it? It felt like that. Threw it in front of my feet, saying like, see that? Like that? This is your life. Don't want to deal with that? I force you to deal with that. 
Look at this shit. Take that. And then was like all of the shitty parts <laughs> of my life. It's a majority of my life. It was like a movie and on, on the back of my eye. Over and over and over again. I had to go through it, through things that I have forgotten a long time ago. It was a never-ending horror movie. And I'm not ashamed to tell you that I couldn't stop crying and screaming. If at that moment, if somebody would have been with me and would have called 911 or whatever, they would have put me in a mental hospital. Pretty sure. And at one point, I was so close, so close to <laughs> unplug myself, to throw in the towel, just in order to stop the pain. I didn't. I'm still here. Next day, try to go to work, or <laughs> I was at work, home office. Start a computer. Had to shut it down again. I didn't stand, I couldn't stand seeing people, normal people, living their normal life while mine is falling apart. It was the first time that I called in sick and after 10 years. Anyway, this phase lasted for three days. In those three days, no sleep at all. I lost about five kilograms of weight because I couldn't eat. It was horrible. But after that, it got better, at least that. I don't want to extend it too much, but at one point felt like, I don't know, as if I would be in a different dimension. This were not my people anymore. It's not my friends anymore. Not my relationships anymore. I felt like I cannot deal with those normal kind of people anymore. And funny part about this, I felt that those people couldn't deal with me anymore as well. It's a win-win situation. And now, I don't think that I'm completely through it, because I still have some mood swings in the wrong direction. But I'm definitely another person. And this person, this version, I like more. And you know, that's what people say. The person that goes into the dark night of the soul, the individual has to die. While you walk through the dark night of the soul. You're a soldier, a warrior. You're fighting against yourself. And after the dark night of the soul, this warrior has to die to transform, transmute you into your new spiritual awakened self. So what I want to tell you is, if you're going through the dark night of the soul, now, or in the future, don't be scared. Or maybe be scared. No, don't be scared. Just a face. But you have to go through it alone. Nobody can help you, maybe support you, 
but nobody can help you because nobody will understand what you're going through. But the light at the end of the dark tunnel is so amazingly bright. How's that saying? You won't recognize paradise if you haven't been through hell. I don't know if I could help you. Maybe it was a little interesting, I don't know. See you next time. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay tuned. Ciao, ciao.